This first micro talk is about a movement called Cubo Futurism that emerged in Russia at the beginning of the 20th century. And the artists tried to create a new language called Zone. Russia, at the beginning of the 20th century, just prior to the First World War and the 1917 Russian Revolution, was at the gates of industrialization, predominantly a rural economy, but still started to see the signs of a world in rapid change. It was also a period of high literary and artistic activity, and there was plenty of sound creation. For instance, Wassily Kandinsky, a pioneer of abstract art, was experimenting with sound, color, and music. George Gurdjieff, a mystical philosopher, created the objective music based in inner octaves. And Nikolai Kublin, who founded a famous cabaret called The Stray Dog, created a synesthetic alphabet in which the vowels have different pitches and the consonants were associated to a color. It's in this context in which a variety of futurisms emerge. The one that we are interested in, it was heavily influenced by Cubism and it was called Cubo Futurism. It appeared in public with a manifesto called A Slap on the Face of the Public Taste and it was signed by Mayakovsky, among other writers, like Kruchenik and Klenikov. The manifesto called to break from the old language that was unable to keep pace with the gallop of life. It called for language renewal in the creation of neologisms. Some of the poetic strategies that they had it was dislocated syntax, lullaby songs, children rhymes, collage, and typographic and phonetic experimentation. For the Cubo Futurists, poetry was a workshop, a laboratory for linguistic renewal, for the renewal of language. And it's important to notice that they were very interested in linguistic research, mainly Slavic language research, because that sets them apart from other kinds of futurisms. Kruchenik and Klenikov were the two poets that set out to create Zaum. Za meaning beyond and um meaning mind. Usually it's translated like transrational language, transcense language. Well, the first artist uh, involved in the creation of Zaum, it was Alexei Kruchenyek. He criticized heavily the past literary tradition and also his contemporaries. He was also very critical of the aesthetic world. For him, the fact that language was still subordinated to meaning and to reference was the proof that language was still in change. The Futurists saw this shortcoming and that is why they created Zaun. For him, Zaun was a mixture of the language of the schizophrenics, glossolalia, onomatopoeic verse, futurist neologisms, and folk or mystical incantations. For him, Zaun was a primordial language a language that liberates the poet from the constraints of grammar, syntax, and national vocabularies. In his view, consonants bear the weight of reality, whereas vowels the opposite, universality. One of his techniques was isolation. And he picked up a Russian prayer in isolated only the vowels, and that is the poem that I'm going to do now. E -u -u -ya -o -a -o -a -e -ya -ya. 
1915, he claimed that the typical Russian laundry bill possessed superior sound qualities than any line from Alexander Pushkin's novel in verse, Eugene Onegin. But he also said that his poem, his own poem, was even better. Kvap! Tarad! Ping pure kavara kuaba vawakra trabaka brakata. Vladimir Klenikov was a very important figure, literary figure in Russia at the time. He was a mixture of a poet and an itinerant mystic. He was very interested in, in, in the combination between maths and arts, and he saw deep connections between dates and the development of humankind, specifically the history of Russia. For him, Zaum was a pure international language, an emotional Esperanto, the language of the stars. Even if his research in experimentation was based in Slavic languages, he thought that Zaum spoke to the soul of humankind. He didn't think that poetry needed to be understood, needed to be intelligible. In fact, he often talks about the forgotten languages, folk incantations, spells, Languages that are spoken only in ceremonies, that we don't know the meaning, but he says they could have more power on us than the words that we understand. For him, the sounds of the words bear meaning, specifically the consonants, the first consonant of each word. For him, to understand and to unveil these hidden meanings of the sounds is one of the aims of Zaum. For him, sounds like a shh or mmm or vv, they bear meaning that comes for, from the predome of our souls. One of the Klenikov most recurrent concerns was the creation of words. And that can be seen in one of his most famous poems, Incantation by Laughter, in which he get the root of the Russian word for laughter and introduced prefixes, suffixes, infixes, invented morphemes to create new verbs, new adjectives, new nouns. And this is a, a version made by the translator Paul Smith, Incantation by Laughter. Halaha ut lofan, la flins, hala, ufolahan, la flins, who laughing with lafe, who halafen left to lee, halaha, uf lofan, holy, hala. Holoflis, loflins, lafe, uf, belof, laf, chalorong, halaha, lofinis, loflins, lafe, hilofan, utafli, lafen, lafen, halof, halof, halo, lufekin, lufekin, lofleningung, lofleningung, hala, ulofan, loflins, halaha, uoflans, loflins. It could also be said that one of the most interesting uses of Zaum by Klenikov appeared in his play Sangesi, in which the Sangesi, the speech maker that talks to the birds, the insects, explains to the masses Zaum. And this is the poem in which he explains Zaum. Mara Roma, Biba Bol. 
Ok, kokš, el, re, de, 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 perši, pe, pe, pa, pa, pe, čogi, gona, genigan, a, eđ, eđ, ale, eđe, ele, ek, ak, ok, gamč, gemč, eo, rrpi, repi. To summarize, we have two Russian poets working in the same period, part of the same literary movement, Cuban Futurism, both creating the same language that they call Zaum, using similar poetic experimentation strategies. Still, they think about their creation in different ways. Kruchenik thinks that Zaum is a language that liberates the poet from the constraints of grammar and syntax and the patterns of the national vocabularies. For Velimir Klenikov, Zaum is a universal language, a language that speaks to the soul, the subconscious of humankind. And the aim of the language is to unveil the hidden meanings of the sounds of the words. Thank <laughs> you.